The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus summoned the twelve and began to send them out two by two and gave them authority over unclean spirits. He instructed them to take nothing for the journey but a walking stick, no food, no sack, no money in their belts. They were, however, to wear sandals, but not a second tunic. He said to them, Wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave from there. Whatever place does not welcome you or listen to you, leave there and shake the dust off your feet in testimony against them. So they went off and preached repentance. The twelve drove out many demons, and they anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of oh, the Lord. So in the first reading, uh, we read, uh, now we're reading the first book of Kings, chapter 2, and it's the moment when David is dying already, and so he's passing, you know, his throne to Solomon. How many children David did David have? Do you know? Well, I tell you, he had more than 20 children and many wives. Uh, six of them, six children he had in uh, Hebron because he, he reigned, well, we read, right? he, he reigned for s six or seven years in Hebron, in the south, and then 33 years in Jerusalem, so 40 years, and Solomon will reign 40 years as well. Uh, and he had, you know, several children. Uh, Solomon is, uh, as we know, the son of Bathsheba, but he's not the only one. And he's not the first one. There are, before him, there are other children. There are four of them. Uh, but David, you, you know, in Israel, the father had the power to choose who. So every father had the the, the possibility to decide who is going to be my, my heir, who is going to be my heir. And, uh, and he decided for Solomon. And what is the recommendation? The recommendation is, you've got to follow the commandments of the Lord. That's the only thing that he says. As long as you follow the commandments of the law, of the Lord, and of the law, uh, then God will follow you. So let us apply this now to the Gospel. Uh, we read Mark chapter 6 is the mission of the twelve. We know that later on Jesus will, will, will send the 72 disciples. But this is the first mission. It's the mission for only the little group that was with Jesus. And he sent them to do two things. He didn't send them to, to work miracles. He sent them for the ministry. The first is the authority over unclean spirits. He sent them as exorcists. And then he sent them to anoint with oil the sick. It's the sacrament of the anointing of the sick. And this is all, the, all the, 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 the apostles have to do. So this is the moment in which the disciples become the apostles, because they are sent. That's why we call them apostles at this point. But uh, 
they were uh, more capable of uh, casting out demons and curing the sick. They could do that more the more they were holy. And the, and the rule is still the same. Yes, we know that there is a difference in between sacraments and sacramentals. So the sacraments we know are seven, seven sacraments, right? And then there are the sacramentals that are main. Every blessing is a sacramental after all. The sacraments, they work out not of the holiness of the priest, but in Latin we say ex opere operato, which means uh, just because you do it, the sacrament is a, a sign efficient of the grace of the Lord. So what happens? Let's translate that in this world terms. Uh, what happens if the priest is in mortal sin and he celebrates Mass? Well, he got to go to compassion, of course. But for the people, everything is still working. So a priest, even in mortal sin, is still consecrated. And if you are receiving absolution, from a priest who is not in the place of God, you are still receiving the absolution because it's ex opera operato. It's just because he's doing it, just like Jesus wants and in the name of Jesus, that you receive the efficient grace of the Lord, the sacrament. Sacra. For sacraments is like this, but not for sacraments. For sacramentals is exactly the opposite. Ex opera operantis. So not for, for what you are doing, but it depends on the one who does it. That's why you go to receive a blessing from a saint, you know? Why do we go to the saints? Because they, they, are, they have a holy life. This is the suggestion of David for Solomon. And this is the same suggestion of Jesus for the Apostles. So the Apostles, they were living with Jesus all the time. And so out of that, uh, the presence of Jesus, they were able to, to spread the blessing of Jesus. And let us see now uh, the recommendations of Jesus. Take nothing for the journey. So Jesus is recommending, first of all, poverty. So in order to have the presence of God with them, the apostles, they don't need to bring with them anything. Take only a walking, a walking stick, because you know, they were, they were walking really many, many miles every day. And then, no food, no sack, no money. So no food means that uh, you got to trust the providence. So you need to ask every day. And then no sack, it means that you cannot collect things. And no money. Yes, I, I really believe that Jesus never touched a coin. Never touch any money. And then wear sandals, because you have to walk. So the stick and the sandals, they go together. But no second tunic. What well, it means, no second tunic. So, you know, they had a tunic like this white one that I have here. And on top of it, there was the mantle. Right? And that's all. So, one only tunic means that every night you got to wash your tunic and you will cover yourself in the mantle and then in the morning you take back your tunic so it's a life of essential things so a life reduced to the minimum 
How about the spiritual recommendation of Jesus that comes more from his example? So I live with Jesus, so what do I learn? And what is that by living with Jesus I can then uh, give, pass on to the people that I meet? Well, first of all, Jesus is an example of a life of penance. So this thing of saying, don't bring food with you. It's a life of penance. The example of Jesus is an example of fervent prayer. Jesus woke up early in the morning to, to go and pray by himself. Uh, the example of Jesus is a sincere desire to glorify always the power of God. Jesus is never showing off. He's doing exactly the opposite. He's demanding from those who receive miracles not to say to anybody. And then Jesus is an example of deep humility. Nobody is humble like Jesus. So you imagine Jesus was even they, they spit on Jesus. So the Son of God. You know, and he, he is meek and humble of art. Then uh, Jesus is an, ex is an example of living charity. So we said he never touched any money. And uh, you know, the, the apostles, they were helping the poor. In fact, you remember that uh, when Jesus told to Judah to go during the Last Supper, after he gave communion even to Judas, uh, and he told them, what do you have to do right now? So everybody thought maybe he sent him to do some act of charity because they were used, they were used to give. Jesus in a, is an example of burning faith, also Jesus a faith, not as a God, of course, but as a man, he's a real man, he's a true man, and he has faith too, so he prays to the Father, and when he works a miracle, he believes that God work the miracle. You know? And then Jesus is uh, an example of hope that no kind of difficulty can upset. Jesus is full of hope. Is full of hope even for Judas. Is keeping on believing that one day he will change. So he keeps Judas in the number of the Apostles. So all these uh, things that we said, I will read them again, uh, they are uh, useful and necessary in order to have that holiness that is needed in order to, to spread the grace of God. So we said, a life of penance, and this is not only for the Apostles, this is for everybody for everyone who believes in Jesus. A life of penance, a fervent prayer, a sincere desire of glorifying, to glorify the power of God, deep humility, living charity, burning faith, hope that no kind of difficulty can upset. Everything is possible to those who have such virtues.